Starting today, we're going to start looking specifically at the quadrilaterals. All right. Before I go over each one individually, I want to introduce you to the entire family. All right. These are the ones we're going to go over for this entire unit. As you know, it's pretty long. This is why. Look at all the figures we have to eventually talk about. All right. So at the very top of the family, this is the family tree. At the very top, we have the quadrilateral. All right. Quadrilateral. Now you're asking probably why is it broken into three different stems here, three different families, and I'll show you why at the end. First family over here to your left, this first family here of four different figures, that's the parallelogram family, and it is led by himself, Papa Parallelogram. All right, he has three kids. All right, three kids. He's got his daughter, Rosie, the rectangle. Uh, why am I writing Rosie? <laughs> I don't know. Rectangle. Randy, the rhombus. And the golden child, Susie the square. Now, don't give me this whole crazy and get awkward in here with, wait a second, they're coming from these two. Nope, these are all from the same family, all right? We're not rolling that way, all right? We're not rolling that way, okay? So those are the parallelogram family. And then we go over to the trapezoid family. All right, we have Tony, the trapezoid, followed by Isaac, the isosceles trapezoid. And then we only have this person over here, the outcast of the family. Some of you will be able to relate. All right, the black sheep. The one no one worries about, and that is Kyle, the kite. Okay, quickly, why do I divide them up into three separate families? All right, here's why. Everybody in the parallelogram family, everyone in the parallelogram family has both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. That is the one property that is shared by all of them. Opposite sides are parallel. But in a trapezoid, I only have one pair that are parallel. Okay? Not both pair, one pair. That's why we separated them into a separate family. And then the kite, got nothing for you. No parallel sides. All right? So the reason they're divided up into three different groupings is based on how many sides are parallel to each other. All right? All week long. We're talking about this one right here, the parallelogram, all week today, all week this week, all week. Proofs, properties, algebra, anything we can find, all right, before we go on to rectangle and rhombus. Questions? Going? Let's do this. Introduce you to the parallelogram and the five properties we're going to need to be responsible for. First thing, before we start on properties, how the heck do you label a quadrilateral? Because with the triangle ABC, you can put ABC anywhere you want. Not here now. Not here. All right? If I name this parallelogram ABCD, you can put A anywhere you want. Any vertice, you can put A. But from there, you must label it clockwise or counterclockwise. You cannot, cannot jump diagonally. All right? You must label it clockwise or counterclockwise, it does not matter, okay? And this is, again, and let me introduce you to something as well. Anybody in here wanna write that word parallelogram every single time we need to write it down? Probably not, it's a little too long for you, all right? So instead, I have an abbreviation for it. You got your parallel sign, and then I put a dash o gram. how about that? Parallelogram, all right? So this is parallelogram ABCD. Do not be the kid. Um, I, what's an 11 gram Don't be that kid. 
okay? Parallelogram, all right? Parallelogram. We're giving you a shorthand now. Questions, comments, any concerns? How to label it. All right, properties. There's five you're going to be responsible for. One I already gave you when I introduced the family. What was the one I gave you? Opposite sides, parallel. And let's start labeling our parallelogram up top, the correct symbols to mark the diagram. Remember, parallel was the arrows. So opposite sides parallel. This might get a little messy. Anybody know any other properties? I got opposite sides parallel. Hello, Ryan. First of all, let's discuss this matter. Fresh cut. Very nice. Professionally done or homegrown? Nice. Okay. More questions I have for you. Uh, do you approve? Yeah. Okay. So last question. How much say do you get into it? Wow. hundred percent. So what, what do you tell them or her? Sorry. What do you do? Do you know what type of blade you get on the side? What number blade? It's important things to me. A three, that's pretty short, nice. And then a trim on top, nice, nice, looks good, nice job. How often do we usually go? Is this a monthly, two month, three, every two months? Okay, looks good, nice job, stud. What do you got for me, what's another property? That is true. And let me keep going around because it's just not A and D are supplementary. Okay. A and D are supplementary. A and B are supplementary. B and C are supplementary. C and D. So the name I have for those angles are consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay. Consecutive angles. Two angles in a row are supplementary. Can anybody find another property about the angles if you know consecutive angles are supplementary? What's up, Meg? The, the opposite angles of A and C and D are congruent. Congruent, good. Opposite angles are congruent. I'm devastated. I that, hurts. that hurts. That hurts. That hurts. Ungrateful. How do you know? Well, whoa, whoa, me. How do you know it came from me? How do you think I owned that previously? What if I'm I'm not a coffee drinker? I have no use for it. And how do you know? Don't think it came from my residence. <laughs> Moving on. Opposite angles congruent. You guys actually got two of the tougher ones done already. Not only are the opposite sides parallel, they're also congruent. Opposite sides congruent. So we can mark the opposite sides congruent with hash marks. I should have put in the uh, angles too, right? Opposite angles congruent, the arc marks. Oh, we are filling up, huh? And the fifth and final one I wouldn't expect you to get because we don't even have it drawn up here. Mm, go brown. What are these I'm drawing in? We talked on Friday. They are diagonals, yes. They are not the same length though. Let me draw in the markings and you tell me what the diagonals do. Ready?
And it looks like I have to go four here. Those pieces are equal. What are they doing? Oh, here we go. Yep. This should be good. Wow. Thank you for your first contribution of the year. Bisect each other. Yes. <laughs> too harsh for a Monday? Too, too early? Diagonals do bisect each other. These we got to know down pat because we're going to use them in proofs. Okay, we got to know these down pat so we can use them in the proofs. Today it's all algebra though. Tomorrow we'll get into the proofs. Any questions on these five properties of a parallelogram? Now, let me warn you because we're going to be bringing back a former unit now. The fact that these are parallel and I drew in a diagonal. Anybody know what type of angles have been formed when you have a parallelogram now with a di at least one diagonal drawn in? Alternate interior, and what do we know about them? They are congruent, so watch out for that, especially, again, when you have a diagonal drawn in, the alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, just a heads up. All right, let's test some algebra out. Pretty basic ones here, but, yep. Oh, he always asks that theorem used. Why? I hate that. Suck it up. All right, uh, find the value of x. What do you know about 10 and 2x minus 4? They are equal to each other. I'll ask why in a second. 2x minus 4 equal to 10. Not asking for brain surgery here. 2x equals 14. Value of x, 7. More important to me is what theorem do you use? What property did we just apply of the parallelogram right now? Of those five, which one did we just apply? Let's roll 18. Okay, here's what we're going to start writing down because tomorrow we're going to start writing it in the reasons column. Parallelogram implies, and now tell me one more time, Caitlin, the theorem you used, diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so tell me parallelogram implies, and then the property you just used. Everyone have a nice weekend? Good to hear. Next one. I don't have to set up any equation, I hope. X equals? 16, what uh, property are you applying to know that's 16 and not another number? 17, what do you got for me? Oh, one job. Teddy probably went to a little milk concert too late. 26. Okay, so parallelogram implies opposite sides congruent. That was an inter interesting interview, by the way. Hope you're hearing that, Teddy, as you watch this. All right, good job so far. And then how about three now? I know these seem very easy. I get it. Wait till we get to the proofs. What do I know about 4x minus 10 and 3x minus 2? They're equal. Yep. Go ahead, solve for x. Let me know the value of x and the theorem we used. Uh, one, let's roll. Um, we have parallel OK, how about my final answer? Eight. Eight, thank you. I'm hurt. I really am, now that I heard about that gossip. When have I ever done anything? I know, this is the first time. Congratulations. Are you calling me back? I am not. Attention. <laughs> it's fine. I'll get over it. Because I did say you could do anything you want with it as you left the room. So I did, I did say that, yeah. I just thought. Okay. And don't start laughing over there, Pizza Girl, because I was walking down the hallway that day and just saw some random kid with that red ball in his hand playing with it. Just, no, you were not anywhere to be found. Just throw, I don't know. I don't know your whereabouts, but there's some rando kid walking down the hallway. I'm like, that's the red ball I gave the Pizza Girl and nothing. 
All right, nothing. All right, moving on. All right. Who was it? I thought you were on the ball. Oh, oh, never mind there. All right, Liz. Yep. All right, I'll, I'll see how that. I see how that goes. All right, four x plus three. I k is thirty five. What do you want to set up here now? I could do one of things. Emma, I could do one half of thirty five equals four x plus three, or I could do two times four x plus three equals thirty five. Theorem that's getting us to that place, same one we've been using here, parallelogram, and I'll ask somebody for the answer in a second. Parallelogram implies diagonals bisect each other. Oh, look at everyone getting out the old calcs. Just need the decimal answer. That's it. You don't need to round here, I don't think. Wasn't that big of a decimal. Seven when you're ready. Yep. 3.625. Anything before we do the last one? All right. TR 14, ME 31. Ooh. TR 14, ME 31. What's the length of TI? TI. 11? Not here. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. 24, length of TI. Yep, how'd you get it? Because the diagonals bisect each other. I'm not asking for the theorem here. Uh, why did I give you the 31? Just to mess with you, as some of you I did. All right, why did that 31 come into play? Has no use. Okay, I guess you could cut it in half and give me, uh, what is that, M, R, and R, E, but I wouldn't care. So, all right, 28, questions? All right, well, there's, guys, there's not much I can do with the sides. Opposite sides are congruent, diagonals bisect each other. Where we could get really crazy and challenging is with the angles now. All right, with the angles. So what I'm going to do here, and there's no theorem you need here, so don't worry. I'm going to just do basic number six with you, and I'll leave you to seven, eight, and uh, nine in your groups. All right, so go back to the, if you need the properties, go back and use your properties. Angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. Two properties you need to remember. Opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles supplementary. So if I start with 140, your choice, give me another angle. Here you go, three, give me another angle. Angle 140, because they're supplementary. Let's keep this show going. Three more people, just to hear your lovely voices. Number 12, any other angle? Angle three is 40. We could say consecutive angles supplementary are now opposite angles. I don't know why I put angle 40. Surprised no one's barking at me about, you put an angle there. Eight. Uh, um, Hi, Colin. Okay, I don't two, care. Two equals 140. Opposite angles congruent. Nice. I did it again. And then how about remaining angle four? Uh, 26. Uh, I don't know what angle four is. I'll throw a 140 there maybe. I don't know. And maybe if that's angle four. All right, we're good. Getting rattled. All right, I'm going to let you and your group with about five minutes here find the rest of the angles in seven, eight, and nine. Please remember my little warning before. If you have a diagonal drawn in, you can look for alternate interior angles. All right, so I'll meet you back here in about three, four, five, however long it takes.
Again, please call me over here if you're not getting these angle measurements. Could be anything, vertical angles, linear pairs, alternate interior.